The atomic energy program was started in the country in 1948 and the Department of Atomic Energy, DAE, was established in 1954 by the visionary Indian nuclear scientist, Dr. Homi Jahangir Baba, who envisioned it as the hub for the development of nuclear science and technology and their applications. The objectives for DAE were multifold, namely to create know-how for harnessing atomic energy for power generation, using radiation technology for societal applications in agriculture, healthcare, and industry, while carrying out basic research in a variety of domains of mathematics, science, engineering, and medicine. Right from its inception, DAE has placed great emphasis on the in-house development of human resources for carrying out its research and development activities. To meet this objective, the BARC Training School was established in 1957. Subsequently, to further strengthen the framework for human resource development at DAE establishments and push the frontiers of nuclear science and engineering through academic programs, the Homi Bhabha National Institute, HBNI, was established in 2005. It was recognized as a deemed to be university by UGC and given the status of a grant in aid institution of DAE in 2014. HBNI was accredited with an A grade by National Assessment and Accreditation Council in 2015. We are very proud of the world-class nuclear energy technologies developed by us in a self-reliant way. Our next challenge is to explore pathways for nuclear energy development in the country which are consistent with the national needs but for which no parallel might exist anywhere. Homi Bhava National Institute was therefore conceived to take Department of Atomic Energy to the next level from self-reliant technology development capability to a capability to translate latest research outcome into a first-of-kind technology to meet national goals. This is being done leveraging available pool of researchers and laboratory infrastructure within the DAE system and enlarging the number of students doing research. HBNI conducts postgraduate and doctoral programs in various disciplines across its 11 campuses, comprising the four research and development units of DAE, Baba Atomic Research Center, BARC, Mumbai, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, ITCAR, Kalpakkam, Radha Ramanna Center for Advanced Technology, RRCAT, Indore, and Variable Energy Cyclotron Center, VECC, Kolkata, and the seven grant in aid institutions of DAE, namely Harish Chandra Research Institute, HRI, Prayagraj, Institute of Mathematical Sciences, IMSC, Chennai, Institute of Physics, IOP, Bhuvaneshwar, the Institute for Plasma Research, IPR, Gandhinagar, National Institute of Science, Education and Research, NISER, Bhuvaneshwar, Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics, SINP, Kolkata, and Tata Memorial Center, TMC, Mumbai. HBNI is thus a conglomeration of constituent institutions and off-campus center with a thriving academic and research environment. The organizational architecture of HBNI with a central hub at Mumbai being linked to centers of excellence all around the country is one of its strengths and has facilitated research and development across diverse disciplines while sharing common objectives. The academic and research activities at the constituent institutions have significantly enhanced the country's indigenous capability in nuclear science and technology and generated capable and dynamic human resources to man and spearhead these programs. HBNI offers options in 32 diverse academic programs across physical sciences, chemical sciences, engineering sciences, mathematical sciences, life sciences, 
medical and health sciences as well as humanities. In addition, HBNI also runs several academic programs towards skill development for the country. In the 15 years since its inception, HBNI has awarded over 1600 PhDs, with around 250 PhDs being awarded in 2019-2020 alone, a notable academic achievement. One of the noteworthy societal contributions of HBNI is in the field of medical oncology, with programs such as Doctor of Medicine, Doctorate of Medicine and Master of Chirurgy being conducted under its aegis. Since its inception, the number of qualifying specialists has increased from 2 to 78 in the MD program and to 61 in the Doctorate of Medicine and Master of Chirurgy, thereby considerably enhancing the number of professionals engaged in cancer research and treatment across the country. In fact, almost 50% of practicing specialists and super specialists in oncology in the country have undergone some part of their training at HBNI. With the widespread use of nuclear medicine-based diagnostic and therapeutic procedures, availability of trained professionals to implement radiation safety protocols at these centers has become an imperative. HBNI conducts Diploma in Radiation Protection Program to create professionals to meet these requirements. Graduates of this program serve a critical function and are in high demand at centers carrying out these procedures. Constituent institutions and off-campus center of HBNI are all eminent institutions in their own domains. In fact, several of them were established much before HBNI and had already possessed a rich tradition of excellence in research as well as training. For example, SINP was established as early as 1949 and was the first institution in the country to begin a course in nuclear physics. BARC was established in 1954 and has been running a training school on nuclear science and engineering without any interruption for over six decades. More than 2,200 Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello.
good afternoon mr sanat kumar you wanted to say something you have to unmute yourself
Very good afternoon to all of uh, those who have joined today. And we are very happy to see several uh, senior colleagues from the DAE, in addition to experts uh, present and uh, retired, uh, joining us for this special occasion. We are uh, gathered here to start uh, the first of the programs towards the celebration of 75 years of uh, Indian independence. Uh, a few days from now, we will be stepping into the 75th year of the independence uh, and uh, the government, the UGC and all of all our educational institutions, uh, we are gearing to have a celebration of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. And it's uh, very appropriate to use this occasion to recall the achievements made by the country in various domains of science and technology in the 75 years but also deliberate on challenges ahead. And uh, it's, uh, it's also the occasion to recall the pioneering contributions made by individual scientists, several of them, and technologists, and recall their great impact which they have made in the world of science. We need to think about people like J.C. Bose and C.V. Raman in, in physics, Prafulla Chandrarere in chemistry, Srinivas Ramanujam in mathematics, and the pioneering efforts to create institutions of excellence, people like uh, Dr. Homi Baba, Dr. Shanti Swaru Bhatnagar and others, this kind of uh, program to recall science and the scientists and technologies, that is bound to inspire all of us, especially considering that these pioneers made really indelible and original contributions to their domains at a time when the country did not have the best of the facilities and research infrastructure to boast of. They created the scientific temper and created institutions which the world continues to hold in high esteem. And we are very proud to be part of, part of one such organization, the Department of Atomic Energy. So to provide a perspective on such uh, leaders and institutions and their achievements and also advise us on the way forward, we need to listen to living legends who have personally experienced and contributed to the growth of science and technology in the country. And therefore, the Homi Baba National Institute has planned to hold a series of uh, eminent lectures by such pioneers, one each month. And what a better way to begin with this series uh, than to have with us as the first speaker, Dr. R. Chidambaram. It will be presumptuous on my part to try to introduce him to this audience, but allow me to say that as a researcher, then as the director of BARC, then secretary DA, and finally as the principal scientific advisor to the government of India, Dr. Chidambaram has made immense contributions to the country in various capacities and various domains. He provided leadership not only to national organizations, but also international organizations such as the IAEA Board of Governors, the International Union of Crystallography, for example, for which he was vice president for some time. What is important is that in every international forum in which he participated, he had put India in its rightful place on a high pedestal. He is a recipient of a number of honors, including the Padma Shri and Padma Vibhushan, and we are truly delighted that he has agreed spontaneously when I mentioned to him uh, that we would like to invite him to deliver a lecture in this uh, series, eminent lecture series. So it's my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Chedambaram amidst us and invite him to deliver his lecture. Dr. Chedambaram, please. Oh, let me start again. Maybe. <laughs> Dr. Vasudev Rao, Dr. Grover, other colleagues of uh, HVNI and other DAE institutions, and uh, was both past and present, and my young friends whom I'm told may be listening in, may be listening in today. I'm grateful to Dr. Vasudev Rao for uh, calling me here to speak on the occasion of the beginning of the 75th anniversary year of uh, Indian independence. See, the 
in ancient india in fields like astronomy and mathematics we had great contribution by people like aryabhatta and bhaskaracharya and others but during the centuries of occupation and colonization by foreign countries by other countries indian science went into hibernation and also could not contribute to or benefit from the first industrial revolution india's renaissance in modern science and technology took place in the first half of the 20th century through great scientists like sv raman homi bhaba and others and this continued after after independence sv raman's nobel prize winning work on raman effect which came to be known after him was a path breaker in modern india's basic research efforts and nuclear power plant design and operation is a milestone in india's technology development that is why i chose the title of my talk as from raman effect to nuclear power of course in the case of uh, development on science and technology there is no halt it is completely open keeps on going and we have to keep pace with it and in fact we should lead the way in many areas which we are perfectly capable of doing see the india celebrates four days in science and technology science day february 28 the day the discovery of the raman effect was announced by cv raman who is the greatest experimental physicist india has produced mathematics day the birthday of srinivas ramanujan who has been called a magical genius natural genius Engineers Day, September twenty, the birthday of Moksha Gunda Mishra Sarayya, the greatest engineer India has produced, he was a civil engineer. And then technology, May eleventh, the first day of the nineteen ninety eight Pokhran Pokhran test. You know, in Raman, this is a very interesting anecdote. when i was a phd student in the indian institute of science i have often been to raman institute and have heard sv raman talking he was a very strong person strong personality but look at this incident when he talks about see when the nobel was announced for him he saw it as a personal triumph an achievement for him and his collaborators then he took the award from king gustav turned back to go to his seat and then he saw that the british union jack is the flag under which he had been sitting and then he says it was then that i realized that my poor country did not even have a flag of our own and was this the trigger of my complete breakdown i mean for a tough man like raman to break down you know it shows of course this uh, great uh, patriotism this is described in the vigyan prasar science portal which contains a lot of very useful information today 75 years after independence we can't blame anybody the young people have huge opportunities look at sivi raman he was a top civil servant assistant accountant general one day in calcutta going in a tram he saw the indian association for the cultivation of science he got down resigned from his job 
and that was where he discovered the Ramana effect. See, that is the passion, passion for science. You must have, and Raman, Raman had. There is a very interesting biography of Chandrasekhar, who was also a Nobel laureate, theoretical astrophysicist, speaking by K.C. Wally. And Wally asked Chandrasekhar, how did India produce world-class scientists like Raman and S.N. Bose in the 1920s? And Chandrasekhar's answer is interesting. He says in the 20s, there was need for self-expression as a part of the national movement to show the West that in their own realm of modern science, we were equal to them. That was the driving force. And look at what Somerfeld said after Raman discovered the effect named after him. India had suddenly emerged in competitive research as an equal partner with her European and American sisters. Today, the motivation should be to make India a developed country among the top 10 developed countries in the world where the Human Development Index is high and then a knowledge economy. Knowledge economy is an economy capable of generating new knowledge, capable of appropriating knowledge generated in other countries around the world. That's what the developed countries have been doing. Anybody can generate knowledge, but the person who has the resources and the capability to appropriate this knowledge and convert it into value, economic value, strategic value, social value, he becomes the most powerful. Baba, the founder of our atomic energy program, Arthur Kostler talks of two kinds of leaders, the yogi and the kamisa. Yogi is the contemplative thinker and kamisa is the man of action. Humi Jahangir Baba was a unique mixture of both. And you know, there are some leaders when they die, not only in science and other areas also, when they pass away, the system collapses. Didn't happen when Baba died. And the atomic energy program continued to flourish. That was because Baba had created a leadership swarm around him. Homi Setna for chemical engineering, Raja Ramanna for physics, MGK Menon, physics in TIFR, Brahm Prakash Metlachi, Yes Rao Electronics. And all of them carried forward the program. And the culture continued to produce leaders in the atomic energy program. Of course, Baba was a renowned theoretical high energy physicist and had done pioneering work in Cambridge and what's called electron positron scattering, now known as Baba scattering, and on cosmic ray showers, which was a very hot subject in those days in Cambridge. He transformed himself into a technology developer. He hardly wrote a paper after. Of course, he created the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. So well respected internationally. He was the first, he was the president of the first Geneva Conference on the peaceful uses of atomic energy. United Nations wanted him as the president. He was also a founder member of the International Atomic Energy Agency. You know, there is a discussion of where it should go. Geneva or Vienna? Most international organizations are in Geneva. But Baba argued persuasively for Vienna because he was fond of opera music. And Vienna is the center for opera, opera music. So, you know, Baba had an amazing, somebody had even called him Leonardo da Vinci of India. Vikram Sarabhai, in fact, Baba met Sarabhai when he was a uh, faculty member in the Indian Institute of Science. And uh, as I said, he was in theoretical 
cosmic ray physics and he induced uh, sarabhai to take up experimental cosmic ray research the topics that would have made a very interesting topic then sarabhai went abroad did his experiment the phd in experimental cosmic ray physics then he started the space program in atomic energy under sarabhai now of course it has become an independent department of space great leader and sarabhai himself has said once i have put it in my article and i quote one wants permissive individuals who do not have a compelling need to reassure themselves that they are leaders no normally great leaders don't show off they are respected because of their capability because of what they have done they don't ask for respect they don't demand respect is given to them. so many others jagdish chandra bose and uh, in this vigyan prasar site it is mentioned says jagdish chandra bose is regarded as india's first modern scientist first to produce millimeter length radio waves transmission and reception not marconi so he has not got the credit for that and the director former director of bose institute says this is bose model of an electric eye which records electric signals received from the outside world and a physical model of memory as a mechanism for storing information justifies Jesse Bose has been considered a precursor of the modern discipline of uh, cybernetics of course he did many things plants response to stimuli and may I, megna saha points out bose was a physicist and the physicist he remained in his outlook to the very end satyendranath bose you know many of you know i don't know about the young guys you may also know there are only two kinds of fundamental particles fermions and bosons spin half named after enrico fermi fermions spin zero or integral named after bose satyendranath bose boson photon higgs boson and you know his interaction with uh, he was a very modest person he uh, did a fabulous work and then sent it to einstein einstein translated it into german and then it was published jointly and uh, you know it says that he wrote to einstein claiming he had derived planck's law for black body radiation without recourse to classical electrodynamics and they got it published and einstein put a note when he sent the paper that bose's derivation of planck's law appears to be an important step forward and uh, highly respected in the international community in those days Meghnath Saha physicist and nationalist born in obscure village in Bengal and uh, you know the Norwegian astrophysics person calls him although bohr must be considered the pioneer in the field of atomic theory it was the indian physicist meghnath saha who first attempted to develop a consistent theory of the spectral sequence of the stars from the point of view of atomic theory there is a famous saha's ionization equation in fact in my pressure and high pressure physics equation of state i have used saha's ionization equation so because it's a solid not a free atom we have to play around with ionization ionization potential and impetus this is written by soma banerji in physics today the impetus given to astrophysics by saha's work can scarcely be overestimated as nearly all the later progress in this field 
has been influenced by it. And much of the subsequent work has the character of refinements of Saha's, uh, Saha's ideas. Prafulla Chandra Ray, which you mentioned, your own field. Acharya Prafulla Chandra Ray is often referred to as the foreign father of modern chemistry in India. Went to the Edinburgh 1882, received PhD 87. And at a time when organic chemistry was this rage, he decided to pursue inorganic chemistry. And he announced a major discovery, mercurous nitrite. And this uh, discovery spawned a novel field of research, in fact, allowing Ray to establish a new school of chemistry in India. And the number of students, 1916, because he joined the Calcutta University of uh, College of Science. In fact, he was a philanthropist. And in 1921, he denoted his entire salary back to the because there was a shortage of students, student support at that, uh, that time. This is from the Lindal Hall Library that in uh, in Kansas City. This quote: Mokshagadha Vishweshwaraya, great civil engineer. He was the engineer responsible for the construction of. Krishna Rajasagar Dam in Mysore, and also designing the flood protection system for Hyderabad. Because he was way beyond just uh, civil engineering, he was also Diwana Mysore, builder of dams and bridges. And then, as I mentioned before, his birthday, he celebrated as Engineer's Day. Mahala Novice is a quote from, I gave this uh, Mahala Novice. Uh, birth anniversary lecture in 2013, pioneer in the field of statistical science. And uh, at that, that time, there was this triumvirate of uh, great physicists, Bose, Satyendranath Bose, M.N. Saha, P.C. Mahalanobis. Model of economic development and concept of socio-economic planning became the underlying framework of India's five-year plan. He went from physics to planning. And you know, statistical science. And because of his push, India's large-scale economic sample surveys carried great credibility even then and even, even uh, today. Established his institute in 1932. And many distinguished Indian scientists in statistical science, including the well-known Dr. C. R. Rao, they were all, they developed their careers. In fact, he was a student of Mahalanovich. Srinivas Ramanujam. Srinivas Ramanujam, this is a quote from a book by K. Srinivas Rao. It's a new book, come just now. Calls it Srinivas Ramanujam, Life and Work of a Natural Mathematical Genius, Swayambhu. You know, when a, the belief in a temple, the image comes up by itself, we call it Swayambhu. This, he calls him an enigma. In a short span, 32 years, like Swami Vivekananda, left behind his famous notebooks, 4,000 theorems, which set the mind of Cambridge mathematician, Professor G.H. Hardy, with whom he worked with awe and admiration, for there were no mistakes at all. Either the theorems were proofs for obvious to him, a very religious man like our Shruti, he thought, this is it, you don't need a proof for this. And they claim, like people like George Andrews, who discovered one of the lost notebook of Ramanujan 76, which had not yet been discovered till then. The fact that Ramanujam knew but did not write down the proofs of all his theorems in his notebooks continues to be a boon to generations of great mathematicians. You know, PhD thesis have been written on providing proofs to Ramanujam's, uh, Ramanujam's uh, theorems. 
And Chandrasekhar says, as long as people do mathematics, the work of Ramanujam will continue to be appreciated. You know, now we are talking of artificial intelligence, artificial robot. Then there are robots, humanoid robots. People like even Stephen Hawking have worried that one day these AI systems will take over the world. I don't agree with that. Agree more with Roger Penrose, who says that no system, no cybernetic machine created by man, no algorithm written by man can be smarter than the man himself. One can do things faster, like we do in a computer. So there has been a feeling that AI system, you know, there are a lot of uh, work done on human machine divide. And uh, they talk of this kind of super intelligent robots who will take over the world. And this man who reviewed the earlier book on Ramanujam, the man who knew infinity, that is a more uh, well known book, Ezekiel Zror. And he concludes that no enhancement of human intelligence, I mean, he's sensing to create the super intelligent robots, opens a door to become a Ramanujan. And no algorithm is likely to produce robots with the abilities of Ramanujan. There are a number of famous Indian scientists who have contributed abroad but had their graduate education in India, Chandrasekhar. Studied from Presidency College, Madras, where C.V. Raman also studied. Incidentally, yours obediently also studied there. I also heard lectures from the same room, same room from which Chandrasekhar and Raman heard their lectures. That continues to be in very good shape. I have visited it after that. And uh, Chandrasekhar limit, one four, four times the mass of the sun. Did his graduate work in India. You know, he had a guru, and uh, that guru knew general theory of relativity, but didn't know quantum mechanics. Rachandra Shekhar was the first man who understood both quantum mechanics and general relativity. So every time he talked about this, his guruji will put him down. That's why he left England to go to Yerkes Observatory, teaching in the University of Chicago. In fact, he came all the way from Yerkes to Chicago to teach a class, and his entire class got the Nobel Prize before him, Li and Yang, for non-conservation of parity. Yella Gadda, Yella Pragada Subbara, many people wouldn't have heard about him. He is a biochemist who worked abroad, who discovered the function of adenosine triphosphate as an energy source in the cell. Hargoin Khurana, of course, everybody has heard of him. Nobel Prize work on uncovering the genetic code. In fact, more for the chemical synthesis of the first gene, and which functioned as a gene. More recently, Venki Ramakrishnan for studies on the structure of function of the ribosome. He, along with uh, Adayonath and Thomas Tites, most complex structure to have been determined by X ray crystallography 2.5 million Daltons. Of course, you need synchrotron sources to get the kind of intense X ray beams for this kind of work, and you also vary the wavelength to solve what's called the phase problem. It provides, this work provides mechanistic details of protein synthesis and to understand antibiotic function at the atomic level and also provides a pathway, it's already happened, for guidance for antibiotic design. There's a recent book, I think uh, Professor J.B. Joshi sent me, your colleague in uh, home, HBNI, by Hari Pulakat. And he talks about, it was a fascinating narrative. Coming of Age of Indian Science is published this year. Talks about the achievements of independent India under difficult circumstances. 
men behind them, cosmic rays. Wonderful work in Kolar gold fields. They looked at uh, lifetime of the proton, among other things, balloon experiment. And G.K. Menon is famous for that because you are near the tropics. In fact, Japanese scientists used to come here to, to see the work that uh, they were doing and B.V. Srikantan. Govind Sarup, Radio Astronomy, Molecular Biology, Obayat Siddiqui. Baba had this wonderful method when he saw the great scientists abroad, he would invite him to start a new program here. That's why he invited Goin Sarup and Obad Siddiqui to start work in, in uh, TFR on um, astrophysics, radio astronomy, and molecular biology. These have become very powerful groups now. You have an OT radio telescope, the one near Pune, and there's a whole center near Bangalore set up now, in a part of a TFR set up by Obad Siddiqui. Chemical Engineering, M.M. Sharma, ICT in Bombay, wonderful institute. Before M.M. Sharma, there was Vankat Raman, and after that, J.B. Joshi. It has been led, ICT has been led by a number of top class engineers. In fact, for various engineering disciplines, people tend to go to IITs. But for chemical engineering, they come to ICT Bombay. Leather and IDAMA, CLRI, Chennai, part of uh, lab. G. N. Ramchandran, molecular biophysics, first man who started it, talked about conformations of protein. People who look at structure of conformations of protein always use the Ramchandran diagram because he had worked out which are when a protein folds itself, which are the which are the things which are prohibited as a starting point. Otherwise a very complex biological structure when so many amino acids are involved, look at uh, to decide the whole so can what is called the G.N. Ramchandran, Ramchandran plot. But of course, uh, Hari Palakath has not talked about, about these agencies, our mission-oriented agencies. Nuclear energy is the most well-known among them. And U.K. Avano, when he was here, he has talked about it. And he says, India is at the forefront of technological development in the nuclear sector not least in the area of fast reactors and related fuel cycles. We were talk, talking about the Indian three-stage nuclear program. And you know, whether it's your car or any other machine you are operating, if it's a reliable machine, it is safe. In your car, if the clutch works properly, if the brakes work properly, you are unlikely to get into an accident. Same thing is true for a, a reactor. If a reactor is working reliably, it means the design is safe and the operational efficiency is very, very high. And look at this. The Kaiga reactor, Unit 1, in 2018, broke the world record for continuous operation. 941 days, which was held by the UK reactor till that time. And this trend continues in the operations because the training is so good, and particularly the pressurized heavy water reactors. India is the leader, NPCL is the leader. In the, though we originally the design, 220 megawatt design came from Canada. Then we built our own 540 design, and now 700, in a large number of 700, are coming up. And in fact, uh, in January this year, Kakrapar 3 in Gujarat, it was synchronized with the grid. This is a 700 megawatt. I'm sure more things are happening. And you know, we take care of the environment. See, today, when we talk about climate change, that is global environment. You must start from your house. What are you doing about your domestic waste? 
are you taking care of converting it to useful fertilizers biogas and then only disposing of the residual whatever cannot be done then there is hospital waste which can have but then you have also to take care when you build an industry you have to take care of the environment and the nuclear power corporation does that this look at this reactors around kaiga i mentioned to you about kaiga 1 such greenery around in fact you have to cut some trees when you build any industrial plant but for every tree they cut they plant 10 of the same genus and even in our other nuclear establishments if you go into bark actually every time i drive watch wonderful greenery i don't think any other establishment in bombay has the kind of greenery that you see in bark same thing is true kalpakam for instance kalpakam you have been the director i am sure you have contributed to the growth of the next slide look at the birds in kalpakam beautiful birds and now a book has come out our feathered friends b vankatraman sent me this from there and uh, look at the lovely birds you know the ecosystem is healthy there only the birds will go when we have our power plants there when we have our research reactors there the birds come there in preference that means the ecosystem in ig car is very very healthy you know there is a book by nasim nicolas taleb famous for his book black swan black swan is an unexpected event with serious consequences because they expect, expect the swan to be white in his later book he talks about anti fragile anti fragile is beyond the resilient or the robust resilient resists shocks stays the same anti fragile gets better and better and this is property is behind everything including your covid virus do anything to that damn virus it gets better and better gets stronger microbial resistance bacterial resistance so i used to say after reading the book our nuclear program is anti fragile in the early days the more they denied us technology we became stronger and when you become stronger a time comes they realize there's no point in pushing these guys we will cooperate with you this is what has happened to our nuclear program and thanks to the support from the us and after the indo us agreement the uh, energy guidelines have been revised so that we can now cooperate in fact when i was director bark i defined self reliance not as doing everything yourself but as immunity against technology denial building a complex system let us say supercomputer you can't build everything here subsystems if they are available to you from a reliable foreign source go ahead and use it but if anything is denied to you including the proverbial wheel you must have the capability to do it yourself that is self reliance talked about climate change ecological health of the world and according to the international panel on climate change the fifth assessment report the sixth one has just come few days back 9th of august what is today 13th four days back and it deals in detail with the physical science aspects of climate change so most of what is said in the fifth report remains and what it said and it is repeated in the sixth report and i quote warming of the climate change system is unequivocal the atmosphere and the ocean have warmed by about 1 degree the amounts of snow and ice have diminished sea level has risen the global effort was to limit it to 2 degrees now they are saying even that is too high bring it not more than 1.5 degrees 
one you have already exhausted another point 5 degree because what has happened is these all these temperature changes have increased the frequency and intensity of extreme events there is even of evidence now that uh, this has happened of course in the short term the cold countries may benefit like norway and sweden sweden as the stanford university study shows recent one that as as the ice melts more resources are become available to these countries but that short term whereas warm countries india and nigeria they have done an economic study have already been affected economic growth has slowed down because of this but what i say is in the long term all countries are going to all countries are going to suffer and uh, what the ipcc report says the key measures the key measures to achieve mitigation there are three aspects to this theoretical you know simulation you must find out it's not enough to say that the global mobility has increased by 1 degree what is happening to my area say 25 km by 20 km high resolution study of the local ecology this is being done second is mitigation what are measures to achieve mitigation goals achieve mitigation of greenhouse gases and one of the main ones is carbon dioxide comes from power production and they say energy production must avoid emission of carbon dioxide and so you must go for renewable energy nuclear carbon capture and storage including bioenergy with carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide uh, capture now renewable is extremely very important for a tropical tropical country like india there is no question about it but then renewable energy is uh, is intermittent so you have to go for storage and large scale storage and building a large power plant or you can hybridize it with hydro if it is intermittent you pump water when the sun is there and you have make it into hydro plant or you produce steam when sun is there and during that period don't use coal and so on but nuclear has to be the base load steady power delivery and the capacity factor for nuclear power plants is very very high compared to even during this covid times covid times but whatever you say next 20 30 years you are going to burn coal that's why when i was the psa we started is advanced ultra supercritical thermal plant coal based but have the steam at 700 degrees plus so that with the same power you produce less carbon dioxide and this required a combination of capabilities the best the best people in material science are ijka and when baldev raj was there then rasdev rao was there we started this work there carried forward by chetal after chetal and the best power engineering equipment guys bhcl best power utility ntpc we brought them all together you know advanced technologies today require a combination of disciplines and i'll come to that sometimes within an organization sometimes you have to bring them you have to bring them together and under the direction of mr chetal this is now completed we managed to get 1500 crore grant from the prime minister's office given to the ministry of heavy industry and for the first time for the first time you see here that uh, various kinds of things you know even though bhcl makes uh, makes power plants including uh, super critical power plants all the technology is imported and many are very often the design but these have been designed for the first time as chetal this 
project was completed in March this year. State of the art design for the steam turbine, welding rotor casing, everything for the first time. A nickel based production designed in IG car and made by this lab at uh, DRDO lab in Hyderabad. And uh, you can see the equipment that is displayed over here. Now, can you go to the slide, please? Yes. It's not. It's not coming here. No. Doesn't matter. Is it on online in your case? No, no. No, this is the slide I wanted. You know, as I'm mentioning, advanced technologies today are multidisciplinary. Designing of a nuclear power plant, space launch vehicles, advanced fighter aircraft are examples of multidisciplinary projects within an institution. What I showed you just now, advanced ultra supercritical thermal plant requires building them together in coherent synergy. Institutions with complementary capabilities. Same thing happens when you, world over, when you have giant science and technology projects, like an LHC, Large Hadron Collider, or ETA. And India has many of them as an equal, equal partner. In science also, you know, when the gravitational waves were discovered, and they, too, in fact, it, they gave a, a Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize for this. And uh, many Indians were involved. People like C.V. Vishweshwaraya from Raja Ramana Institute, Sanjeev Dhuranda, Ayuka, that's why Samak Chaudhary, Re Chaudhary, director of Ayuka says, the Nobel Prize goes to only three people as a rule. But if there are 20, 25 people to be named for Nobel, Dhurandar and I think also Vishweshwara, Vishweshwara would have been a part of it. Of course, that was only two arms within the United States, the LIGO. Now LIGO India is coming out in Maharashtra, then you can be able to triangulate and actually look at the place where from which the gravitational waves are coming, which had been predicted by Albert Einstein. And then this becomes a very interesting astrophysical object. Everybody can look at it, optical, radio astronomers, optical astronomers, and so on. As I said, we are very proud of our space program. And uh, they, launch, they launch satellites from 25 countries. Just given one example, this 100 satellite, Cartosat 2 series, when they launched, also they launched satellites from 25 countries. You know, occasional failures will be there. You know, if you do high-tech, high-risk projects, sometimes it happened yesterday, it doesn't matter. Gaganyaan, Chandrayaan. Gaganyaan is their first manned flight mission. Though the rover failed, Chandrayaan 2, that, uh, that orbiter is giving exceptional data to them. And very recently, they confirmed water on the moon. I read, I was reading somewhere. Light, light combat aircraft. Look at the technologies that are used by DRDO for this. It's not one technology. High, starting with high performance engine, then you look at so many things. I won't read all of this. And it's a flagship program for the Make in India. And Tejas fighter planes have been already been introduced in the Indian in the Indian Air Force. Pokhran, tremendous team of what? both 74 and 78, and major support from one of the DRDO labs, Terminal Ballistics Research Lab. 
you know, the first stage you go undergo implosion, even a thermonuclear device. Fission device is an ex is an implosion device. You need chemical explosive lenses. Those are all made. Design was BRC, but was made by made by DRDO. Then you have to add shockwave physics, condensed matter physics, material science, of course, nuclear neutron physics. Case of a thermonuclear device, radiation hydrodynamics, and radiation matter interaction physics. And you need very advanced electronics. Wonderful people in Bach. I remember Essentia Shadri from the 74 days. Essentia Shadri, PR Roy, radio metallurgy. These are all pioneers in this field who contributed so much to these areas. And then, of course, we had to. The shaft for the thermonuclear device had been done a long time earlier. It was not possible when the new Prime Minister had come to dig that deep a shaft. And Sikka had calculated the maximum you can test there is 45 kilotons. No problem in raising. This is what I have written in this paper, Atoms for Peace, International Journal, volume 2008, that by playing around with materials, you can get 200 kilotons. And everybody realizes that uh, this is, look at, this is a, soon after our test, this is, was drawn by a couple of uh, Venn diagram, a couple of Americans. US and UK, they work together in Manhattan. US and Russia had nothing to do with spying when they brought it down from 30,000 weapons to 10,000 weapons, the salt negotiations. The unmelted, the unmelted cores were sold by the Russians to the Americans. So if you give somebody an unmelted core, you have designed information there. That's why you see that uh, overlap there. U.S. to France, France to Israel, Israel to South Africa, Russia to China, China to India, China to Pakistan, and India stands alone. They realize, of course, we have the Department of Atomic Energy, BAC, has complex expert in every complex field you have got top experts in the field so we had no difficulty and they is recognized in this Venn diagram. International scientific cooperation as I mentioned because there are huge projects which no country today can afford to do it on its own. The Large Hadron Collider we saw the first impression, first evidence or the Higgs boson, the missing particle in the standard model of the nucleus. And we are collaborators as an equal partner. The Department of Atomic Energy contributed $40 million worth of superconducting character magnets for this large hadron collider. You know, many of you know there is a tunnel underground, 100 meters below the ground, ground in Geneva, 26 kilometers in circumference around which protons, hadrons, are moving around. Two orbits slightly separated from one another, bent by dipole mag magnets. But the orbit is corrected by these magnets. And these 1,800 of them or something like that, I had signed that agreement when I was chairman. These were supplied by other working extremely well. And... Uh, then, of course, ETA, fusion device, and uh, we are partners. And uh, the next slide, what you see, of course, these are all given in kind. And you see this cryostat built by the Institute of Plasma Research. It is the largest cryostat built in the world. 30 meters diameter, 30 meters height, built by Larson and Tubro under the direction of the Institute of Plasma Research. And uh, the base of the cryostat has been installed in Kadrash, May last year. Fusion, as I say, it's a complex field. I was inaugurating the conference in Gandhinagar, IPR. And I said, fusion science is a physicist's delight, but actually it's a nightmare for engineers. Very complex technologies are involved. So many things. You know, it's not just atomic energy or space, every department. Look at this. Uh, 
Ministry of Environment given to me by Dr. Rajivan, the former secretary. After the devastating tsunami, which came after the underwater earthquake near Indonesia, South India was affected badly and also Sri Lanka and the sea in between. MOES has built the tsunami early warning center. See, once you get a signal from somewhere which is some earthquake which is tsunami prone, abound and richer magnitude of let us say seven or something like that, which can give rise to a tsunami. They give the alert on to all the places which can be affected. And in 2012, UNESCO designated this as a region, regional tsunami service provider for all countries on the Indian Ocean Rim. So what I'm saying is India is now collaborating internationally and also providing help to many of these, uh, many of these countries. Centers of elect, this is a uh, center of nanoelectronics in uh, Institute, you know, started from my discussions, brainstorming sessions in my office when Arun Shauriji was the minister. And I was giving a talk in one of their mighty meetings. And he and, and Arun Shauri said, I'll talk after you talk. I said, fine. So I said, we missed the microelectronics revolution. We should not miss the nanoelectronics revolution. So in his time came to talk. He said, Chadamaram says, you shouldn't miss the nanoelectronics. He's the principal scientific advisor. I am asking him, what's he doing about it? So I said, give me 100 crores. And I got that, by the way. And we'll hold an open brainstorming meeting. And I will select transparently two places where this can be set up. Institute of Science Bangalore and IIT Bombay. And this is a slide from Naukan Bhatt Center for one of those world-class center. And look at papers which have come out, patents which have come out. And it is open to everybody. We had also had a user's program, national user's program. 700 institutions have used it. And, uh, and also, you know, it, since they did it so well, when we floated this idea of the National Knowledge Network from the PSA's office, and it was built. It was built by MITE. Aras Mani has done a wonderful job, director of uh, this uh, center. It's an optical fiber network, research and education network. It's the largest research and education network in the world today, connecting 1,600 plus institutions. I mentioned it before. I'm sure NK your HBRI is connected to NKN, and you must have a local area network so that anybody here uh, can uh, can connect it. And we are also connected to Giant of Europe, Internet 2 of the USA, Sun Grid. Because we are connected to Sun Grid, the data from this large hadron collider used to come directly to TFR and other institutions because it's very high speed, high speed network. You know, I quote from Noah Harari, his wonderful book, Homo Deus. First book was Homo Sapiens. This is the Homo Deus. And he say, what he says there is humans are not smarter than chimps or wolves. They have taken over the world only because they are capable of cooperating flexibly in large numbers. And this requires communication. Language was the beginning. Telephone. Now electronic. And now, of course, e-communication on the optical fiber. And you can have variants of this. You can create grids. We had recommended at that time. We have got grids. It's entirely up to you. You can isolate your grid. Any grid that you want to operate. You can have your own encryption. For example, we created a brain grid, National Brain Research Center, which you see in this slide, Indian Brain Imaging Grid. And what they do is, which is vascular dementia, stroke, Alzheimer's, and other neurodegenerative disorders, 
all these institutions are now connected. They can share their research. In fact, they can collaborate. In fact, NBRC, if they have, a, let us say, an MRI, an AIMS doctor is available who is an expert. That image goes live to the doctor in AIMS from NBRC, which is outside the uh, outskirts of uh, Delhi. And this doctor tells him what to do next, which scan he wants. So many other, you have brain grid, you have got a climate change grid, you have got a cancer grid. And in fact, uh, Dr. Badwe has done a wonderful job and uh, this has been announced, there is a Vishwam. The national cancer grid is connected internationally. And I remember a couple of years back, Chairman Vyas, had announced it in his speech. It was inaugurated in Vienna. And uh, supercomputers I mentioned. One time computers were not available. Now they are available to everybody. But indigenous supercomputers have been built only by Bach. And uh, the latest one I got from Gigi Joseph from Computer Division. It is Atulya. This is the latest one. I'm, I'm sure they've gone up further. This was uh, slightly dated. 1.35 petaflops. Petaflops is a thousand teraflops. So these are all things which are happening now. Facilities which we could not dream of some time back are now freely available for our researchers. Artificial intelligence. All over the world, all over the place, commerce to cyber security, our NPCL. NPCL uses this AI ML based expert system. See, expert systems are based on machine learning. And then you develop, you put all those data, decision support system. Of course, the final, final decision will remain with the operator that the ERB will not allow the machine to take the decision. But this is support system. Symptom-based intervention, so that you don't stop the computer. Somebody has shaken a fuel rod, you don't stop the computer. Alarm suppression, to reduce cognitive load, false alarm suppression. Prognostics, early detection of possible failure. All these things are now possible. Of course, when, you know, 2015, when they had this flood in Chennai, should not have happened. It should have it was an avoidable flood. Immediately after that, it so happened. I was happened to be in IIT Bombay, and Subhimal Ghosh, young professor there, when he, they made a presentation, Subhimal showed that he was doing something about uh, how to manage floods. I said, "Can you design a system for urban areas?" And then uh, we brought in uh, Shailesh Nayak, who was secretary. Ministry of Environmental and Science. He became the chairman of the committee. We brought in the Center of uh, Naval, not Naval, what do you call it, uh, Coastal Research. Center for Coastal Research of MEMO is in Chennai. All these people use artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics. You also got the IMD data. And they are able to predict now the onset of a possible flood at the ward level. He has published this paper a couple of years back and I was very happy to hear this happened after I left that a similar thing has happened in Mumbai also. Cyber security. You know, we talked about artificial intelligence. These guys, hackers and intruders and attackers, though we have all kinds of cyber firewalls and protection systems. But they are also getting new types of cyber attacks, apart from phishing, eavesdropping, denial of service, IoT-based attacks, and so on. They are leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning. And one of the recent ones reported by McAfee is the, what they call the first-time supply chain attack. You now, you take uh, your management supply chain management software from some company. I think it was Orion. And this attack called the Sunburst 
made a backdoor entry into the software and wrecked the entire supply chain system of course even leon panetta in the early days was talking of a cyber pearl harbor you know this is the problem the more you connect the more convenient it is but you become more vulnerable so who is smarter attacker or the defender fortunately a number of academic institutions in india national labs also international industry are working in the field of cyber security ntro they have got a national critical inform information infrastructure protection center and uh, they, they they have been there the national nodal economy pss office we started the set switch works under the pss office working in front this is in chennai front line fees some of the people from ig car are also involved raghavan for instance is involved from ig car this machine learning blockchain you know quantum cryptography thing is when will quantum computers come they may come instead of two bits like use a normal electronic zero or one qubits can be any number some of them have once you have quantum computers that quantum computer can break any rsa type code or you create a code using quantum computer is very difficult to break it of course they use it only for key distribution rest of it will go transmission is very difficult only for key distribution use quantum and they are sets is active also in post quantum cryptography and the pss office and dr vijay raghavan had asked them to prepare a task force report on cyber sec for ai for cyber security and cyber security for ai both ways it work under the chairmanship of professor balram and it madras this report i am told has been submitted nuclear power plant control system see cyber security is needed everywhere but control systems are more difficult and suresh babu just now retired end of last month he explained to me that this security has to be by design the security is considered before the design and coding in other systems you can play around as you learn you can't do that here every change or patch in these systems requires a rigorous regulatory review and clearance you can do it only for the minimal functions and this initiative was taken by dae back in 2015 the first time in the country they have prepared a set of comprehensive guides for ensuring cyber security of control systems in general not only just nuclear plant control system that control systems for machine tools even machine tools are even now imported just now something is happening here technology management corporates i'm going to give a couple of uh, general slides technology strategy you need at the corporate level you need technology in manufacture go on updating it if you want to stay in the race technology development and use not a one time of affair also in operations you can use technology now that we have cyber all over the place you have to maximize interactions with academia it's happening to in india now as knowledge in the industry system goes up comes very near the knowledge in the developed country industry system interaction with academy is going to increase it's happening so already because industry interaction places like atomic energy space missiles all happening even knowledge coming up innovation support and leadership development of technology road map because mapping technologies of course you want to make money corporates no harm but then the technology has to be consistent with profits and you need technology foresight technology foresight needs forecasting plus including assessments based on the country's needs economic requirements social needs environmental requirements 
security needs and you can prepare every country can prepare a list of critical technology role of the industries is like growing already in the case of nuclear advanced systems very strong interaction with the industry in fact dae has sometimes used actual cost plus 15% in the development of nuclear subsystems in industry seen also a very good system goku model in the uh, rci hyderabad and i have also been telling we had a meeting when when i was a psa many years back some years back with jj irani from tata sons are also there so i was told them when you hire young people in placement interviews take the brightest among them give them job salaries but let them work with a professor for whom the company has respect in a broad area of interest to the company then he will bring back a lot of knowledge now here's a guy who can do great work but then he will tune it to the needs of the company and the professor also gets tuned to the industry needs Of course, we have university research park. I to Madras is the initial one, and then large, very, very successful. Even in the first one and a half years, for which I have data, seventy patents they had filed this, and uh, even we have given to projects in I to Madras like this uh, machine tool project. It is there in the research park with. Uh, with ramesh babu the will search and of course startup program of india there is a segment on high tech manufacturing startups this is the iit madras machine tool project they made the best grinding machine tool in the world under this project ramesh babu of course they used a company micromatics indian scientists are now collaborating covid-19 response has been good many coaxing coaxial i could delhi with whom i am associated giving only an example plenty of examples from each one of these organizations while 13 patents on covid related technologies four technology transfer nine 19 licensing deals one area we have not done is sports research Which we don't have sports science labs in India. You know, we go on telling. You know, we are very happy. We got seven medals in this uh, Tokyo Olympics. One plus two plus four, gold, gold plus silver plus bronze. And then they say we missed by a whisker. But that whisker is covered by sports research. I try to do it after the Rio Olympics, but that time now is the good time. because we are doing well and you know look at this you know see a bath i just took some random example the role of muscles around the knee joint in maximum velocity sprinting and how does a fellow run does he want to increase his step length or his step frequency you know the best athletes and teams approach their training based on the unique needs of every there is no point in developing the wrong kind of muscle i hope somebody starts i've had a word with some departments let us see what happens rural technology equally important we have done this also bridging the gap the bridge across the ravine in uttarakhand so drdo technology taken over there i call this is an example of what the harvard guys call knowledge brokering what what the harvard guys say armagedon that he said most innovations are repackaged repackaged old innovations tune it for a new requirement very through or breakthrough innovation they may be disruptive without being breakthrough you know i don't go into this of course we have a new educational policy which we have all these are happening now many good ideas to so academies have said multidisciplinary is fine 
एस बी एन आई में ऑल्सो प्लीज नोट दिस अकेडमीज बट देर मे बी पीपल हु आर फोकस टूडे वी हैड अ रामानुजम पोर फेलो कान पास एनी एंट्रेंस एग्जाम इन फैक्ट ही फेल्ड इलेवन प्लस टू ट्वाइस एंड आई मे बी मैंशन बिफोर सम ओनली मैन नोन इन हिस्ट्री हु गॉट ए केम्ब्रिज डी एस सी आफ्टर इलेवन प्लस टू द सिस्टम एजुकेशनल सिस्टम must also allow because they are gifted and there are profoundly gifted there are profoundly and selectively gifted and these are the geniuses potential geniuses the system must be on the lookout for such profoundly and selectively gifted gifted uh, people and then we have this new educational technologies this is a very good report from horizon educas you know many of these are already being used adaptive learning ai machine learning analytics for student success you can teach him anything what you think is important but what is the kind of teaching which is needed for his success that comes from analytics and then you know user experience design and pedagogy then all this extended reality augmented reality haptic that is interactive hands on and iit delhi as i said there are many things are happening in education particularly during the covid pandemic for example iit delhi during 2020 or during this pandemic 18 months have digitized 1400 courses they have an e vidya initiative and they have done it jointly with e educational tech companies are getting more and more famous over two dozen online certification programs that's why i call the unicorn boom they are not doing badly what this india today article says unicorn is a startup which has gone beyond 1 billion dollars 1 billion dollars and during this epidemic time in the first four months of 2021 india acquired 11 new unicorns taking the total to 48 not surprisingly the educational tech company byjus this valuation has gone to 16.5 billion dollars india for dreams coming to the end now you want an india which is economically developed scientifically advanced with a knowledge economy and of course militarily strong so our e- ecosystem excellence in basic research including what i have called directed basic research in a paper in 2007 on applied research technology development innovation and we must have an appetite for risk taking phil rosen rosen wise talking about technological breakthroughs when it comes to technological breakthroughs or launching new products better to act and fail than fail to act you know abhijit banerjee i was listening to a lecture recently nobel laureate economics one slide was risk and property trap he says people poor people take up low research low return projects because they fear the risk so they remain poor same is true for research no point in taking up low risk low return research projects science technology innovation policy has come i won't talk about it you know this talks about policy there are two things you know the world science advisor meeting in new zealand we talked about two things policy for science science for policy we have to be strong in both what stip does is policy for science what are the areas we should develop science technology innovation science for policy how does the government decide on policy let us say on climate change or on any other field that is where the scientific community must help them consistent with india's needs and resources 
and to be in the frontiers of science and this is my last slide we need coherent synergy in our recent activities beginning to happen this is a phrase i coined some years back in a combined effort there has to be synergy in every effort of course synergy also has coherence but i am talking about coherence among all these efforts implies phase relationship space time synchronization no mind in developing top class manpower and saying i deployed india doesn't need them they have gone us look at department of atomic energy they did very clever thing training school we developed the manpower which we needed that is coherence and you know we want to build a technology superstructure never forget the foundation for that is higher education and basic research and india should have the ambition to be the first in as we go beyond our 75 years india should have the ambition to be the first introducer of new advanced technology which you have done in the nuclear and some fields after of course due diligence consideration techno economic viability assurance about their safety some people want to go for proven technologies to minimize the risk which you know i don't like that at all proven technologies unless they are subjected to continuous evolutionary improvements i very often said are a synonym for obsolete technology the more you prove them the more obsolete they become and my next slide is thanking you very much for your attention i'm through. thank you sir and uh, no, we are very very grateful to you for taking us through a very fascinating journey starting from the days of uh, jc bose and to the india of our dreams and on the way highlighting the large variety of domains which we have made uh, in which we have made we have, we have become indian uh, leaders of the world and the, the what are what are the risks and what are the challenges that we are likely to face and you have covered a very large gamut of information i'm sure uh, the young students and faculty particularly those who have been listening to you from across and who will see usually what we find is about 200 people participate in this webinar but by the time we go home we find the youtube has a viewership of 500 600 because many people have the, like to watch it more leisurely and absorb the information i am sure it will light our spark in many of the youngsters and make them think about the excellence that we have had and how we can continue to have it in the years to come so we are very very thankful to you for joining us and giving us so much of your time in fact you have spoken for nearly 1 hour and 15 minutes so nice of you to share your knowledge and thinking with us so we, we for all the viewers who have joined here we would like to inform you that we will continue the series uh, and uh, one lecture every month and in the coming month on september 24th we will be having a lecture by dr anil kakodkar and we wish uh, to see all of you at that time thank you very much for joining